process which gives the victim a forum to ask questions. When you make an offender and the victim sit together in the same room, the offender and the victim both have questions, right? Victim has more questions to ask to the offender, want to know why this happened to her, why did this person harm her, right? What was going on in his mind when it was doing it? There will be several questions that a victim wants to know. So it gives a forum to ask questions, receive answers, gain understanding, explain the impact of the crime on them and contribute to the outcome of the process. Contribution to the outcome. So victim will have more participation and more decision making authority in the process. In the court, in the regular criminal justice system, victims are not allowed to speak. Victims are not allowed to say the story. Victims are not part of deciding the quantum of punishment. Did you ever see any victim telling, I want this offender to be sentenced for 10 years and that is valued? Did you ever see this happening in any court? Right? You will not. Judge will decide for how many years this offender should be sent to prison. They will not ask the victim. Okay? Whereas in restorative justice, victim will be consulted. Victim will be asked what should be the ideal punishment to this offender. Their opinion would be mattering. Their opinion would be taken seriously in this restorative practice. So the process may result in the victim receiving an apology. Did you ever see an instance where in the court an offender is apologizing to the victim? Doesn't happen. Right? In most cases, all the victim wants is an apology from the victim. They want their offender to feel sorry for what they have done. That is all they want. And these simple things are not handled in the traditional criminal justice practice. <clears throat> they want restitution, services for some other form of reparation. All these aspects could be met in restorative justice. Next slide. So a restorative justice process encourages the offender to gain insight into the causes and effects of their behavior. Now this offender will also have a chance to hear the victim about the kind of impact this crime had on the victim. Okay. Now the offender is first hand getting information from the victim about the impact of the victim. Now the victim will tell what you did is so terrible I had to stay in hospital for five nights. I had to undergo a surgery. Right? My, my, uh, my husband divorced me because this is what you have done this to me. Right? So all these aspects of the crime from the victim's perspective could be told to the offender directly and help the offender realize the impact of their behavior on other person. So it gives an opportunity both for the victim and the offender to talk to each other, to tell their sides of the stories to each other. So restorative justice gets the community involved in a variety of preventative and responsive programs. Okay? You could also make the community members part of the responsible community members part of this process where everybody discusses on one common outcome. Now there would be a promise from this offender saying I will never commit this crime again or I will not go to the location of the victim where she stays. Right? There will be some kind of commitment given by the offender in front of all the community members. So now the community members can serve as a watchdogs to this offender and ensure that this person is not violating any kind of commitment that is made. Next slide. So what is the difference between mediation and restorative justice? Mediation is also bringing both offender and the victim together and having a conversation. The fundamental difference between mediation, you know mediation? Yeah? Fundamental difference between mediation and restorative justice is that in mediation there is no need to take the blame. Okay? There is no need to take the blame. You can still negotiate, come to a common agreement and resolve the matter. So offender need not be blamed, right? That is mediation. Whereas in restorative justice, it only is restorative justice. The facts about restorative justice. Alternative forms of punishment rather than alternative to punishment. We are not introducing restorative justice as alternative to punishment. It is only an alternative form of punishment. Like I said, 
there will be punishment component attached in the restorative practice as well as an outcome. Prisoners will be sent, offenders will be sent to prison. Right? It will happen. It's just that it is more healthier and more recover evaluated and under practiced areas of criminal justice system. Okay, this is less practice, but overly talked about. There are no published evaluations regarding restorative justice and sexual violence. There is no research on whether restorative justice is useful in cases of sexual violence or not. Very limited research is conducted. It's because it is practiced very limited. Okay? Because RJ is practiced less, there is not much scientific data also available in cases of sexual violence. There is profound lack of empirical evidence. Yes, there is not much research available. And it is partly due to the exclusion of sexual violence from most restorative justice programs. So wherever you see restorative justice program, you would not see that it is applied in the cases of sexual violence, right? There has to be a shift in that process and you have to try, you have to see whether this is useful, whether this could be applied.